evening. Thanks for joining me. I'm going to read a few uh, sort of longer pieces that are connected in the sense that they're about traveling. They're sort of like travelogues. The first two, uh, this first one is about a place in Brazil, in my wife's hometown of Salvador Bahia, and it's her neighborhood, which is called Fazenda Garcia. And uh, it's about to be published in a publication uh, based in Ireland that is actually Brazilian uh, called um, Diaspora Cultural. Anyway, and this one was uh, my friends at Red Pagoda Press put together this one when I was doing a series of readings some years ago. Anyway, so the first travel poem it's called A View of Fazenda Garcia, Salvador, Bahia, Brazil. And it starts off with a quote from Rumi. Open your arms if you wish to be embraced. Tropical brown-skinned people walk up steep streets of ocean blue color, Fazenda Garcia, Salvador, Bahia going from one side to the other in a casual zigzag up the long hill it is no big deal it's how you get there a straight line up a hill like that on a map anyway would seem the shortest route but it is the ancient crisscrossing pattern the helix of surviving the next hill that allows some enjoyment en route and while you're going you call out greetings or are called inside for a coffee or a cerveja bin gelada, an ice cold beer, or to check on your godmother's son, maybe for a nice bit of gossip or a loving harangue about your nighttime excursions. Up the hilly streets through the dense warren of adobe plaster houses of two, three, four stories spinning off one another sit a genchi. The people, on balconies, curbsides, leaning out of windows, all colors, mostly dark-skinned, beautiful people. Young girls and boys, older ladies, young men, watching the parade. Ladies, young women, walking home from working at shops for a coffee or a cerveja, up the hilly streets, walk walking home from working at shops, factories, taking care of rich kids or their graphic designers, professors, accountants too. They're scaling these hills. Serious eyes straight ahead, big city people, men from garages, construction crews, businessmen, stopping in little bars, groceries, all types of workers, even artists. Artists, of course, in Salvador, in Fazenda Garcia, and everywhere, paintings of people, animals, visions on walls everywhere in Bahia. More art per square inch than almost anywhere in the world. And then there's the music. The music. Polyrhythmic, polytextured sound of guitars, drums, horns, lilting voices that come from nowhere else. The Brazilian sound is only itself, related by blood, much blood, to Africa, Europe, and the Novo Mundo, too. And it's all those things, but different. And it comes at you from stereos inside houses, cars, groups of guys in a park singing, girls on the sidewalk singing, whole groups on traveling stages through the streets in Carnaval, Neighborhood teams of dancers, drummers, acrobats, possessed by the music, the spirits. Fazenda Garcia, like all of Salvador Bahia, has all of this. Music, art, long days, hard looks disguising a great love. That I, the goofy mestizo visitor, had the wildly good luck to see as I had married into royalty the gently tolerated husband of a Fazenda Garcia princess, much loved and missed. And all I had to do was 
do my best imitation of a sane adult, while all the love spilled from the sky and drenched us both in Fazenda Garcia, Salvador Bahia. And um, the next one's also a few pages long. <clears throat> and this is from a visit uh, to Puerto Rico, to Calle, uh, a mountain town, a beautiful mountain town in Puerto Rico. And this was, um, I guess around, the, the visit was around 2000 or 2001, and I was traveling with one of my cousins, Gustavo Morales. Um, anyway. This is to Calle Puerto Rico, looking. To Calle, past the long line of lechoneras, small roadsides, taverns, specializing in roast pig. Steel pits are empty in outdoor eating areas, one after another. It is another country. We are climbing the winding roads around the legendary mountain town, Calle, invoked like a sacred refrain. Up, up, and up we ride, hairpin turns normal in these steep hills that shoot up so fast, the locals call them Las Tetonas de Calle, the big tits of Calle, shaped something like those bras from the 50s, Flash Gordon meets Playtex. Anyway, we are moving quickly, stopping for beers at the inevitable roadside bars, iron grill work, beautiful scenery scrawny little brown dogs at every corner. I find myself looking at all these strays. What is the real meaning of all these strays? But I am absorbed by tall, brilliant red blossom flamboyant and orchids growing everywhere in the burned out chassis of an old car. Even there, even there beyond the next turn, we stop. Old dog sleeps in middle of road. He awakes growls in just rudely awakened fashion and slowly, and I mean real slow, gets up and off road. We repeat this routine four times before reaching a peak. We are in deep country. People look at me as I look at them as if through telescopes or some nature documentary. Chickens, chickens everywhere, around the houses by the side of the road and once again, we are stopped twice by mother hens and chirping brood who have been feeding on something in the road. They scatter more quickly than the dogs, but we are in deep country. Round every bend is view of sharply rising hills, bright green valleys, small adobe casitas dot the hillsides, and we stop and we stop over and over. I take 60 photos, batteries run out, just as young, shirtless, shoeless boys, cinnamon brown, ride by us on large ponies, paso finos. And my cousin and I keep smiling and drinking beer. I'm thinking that was us a long, long time ago. And that one uh, appeared in one of my chapbooks, The Body of My Isla and Other Poems, came out in 2007. And um, <clears throat> this one is sort of a travelogue, uh, a little bit different. I taught um, in a special arts program in the hills of central eastern Pennsylvania in a thing that was called art tech and it was a combination of art visual art dance music uh, poetry theater and um, we had uh, we, we were teaching in this old mansion and it, these were all high school kids from uh, local high schools in that region uh, in that rural region and um, at the end of the sequence, we had been together for about three weeks. <clears throat> and um, I wrote this poem about, about them and about us wandering around that old, that old mining town of Pottsville. And this is 
probably from the late 90s when I wrote this one. I think it was maybe 97. <clears throat> Anywhere, anyway, it starts off in the little town of St. Clair and then it moves into Pottsville. And this is called St. Clair Art Tech Cosmic Pizza to Go. Endless street of flags, small restaurant signs proclaiming this establishment supports the UMWA, United Mine Workers of America. These establishments feed the ghosts of miners, farmers, small shop owners. These streets of flat-faced buildings, wood, brick, and stone stand at attention to the ghost parade of lost jobs, young and hungry people gone from this valley, marching towards other places, other ways. Marching away from the 1940s black and white movie that is the burger shop. Ceiling fans, burgers frying, counter and black stools facing empty booths. Bald fry cook, white t-shirt. What'll it be, pal? Half expecting to see Humphrey Bogart come out of the back room. Young men with tattoos smoke lazy cigarettes on stoop of abandoned movie house. Fever of youth spinning wheels posing for passers-by. Hours later, skinny man with kind eyes picks up butts and empty match packs. Mounds of blue-gray slag, brown rocks, spruce, pine, shards of mica, and old brick dot hillside near ball field, surrounded by pathway, covered by soft pine needles, gives way to muddy section to a clearing in middle of three boulders, limestone. Beer bottles smashed. Twisted metal cans, red plastic cups, party spot. Art tech kids grow forests of ideas in teenage heads, dark or light or heavy or breezy. They know edges of punk mohawk stiletto skepticisms, and they know loving romantic ballads show tunes. Judy, entranced by Jim Morrison, and Don hums Rogers and Hammerstein, rel relishing tales of her grandma in the Dust Bowl Depression, California, fruit picking, world expanding, while M is drawn to ghost stories and flute music. Angie is, spoke, is spooked by an abandoned mine near her home and a raggedy can collector who speaks to his invisible children. Kelly is irritated by snotty neighbors and young guys with silly homemade tattoos. Marissa, dramatic and dreaming of blowing up McDonald's. All sense the presence of the minds. Whole families covered with coal dust, hot corner groceries, staring out of eyes full of shooting stars, all sense the anthracite fist of old King Cole. All these worlds spinning, bouncing off each other, shooting, slingshotting off of each other to far distances and traveling back as we watch them through telescopes and try to send them messages about the galaxies inside their minds. And um, that's St. Clair Art Tech, which is in near Pottsville, Pennsylvania. And um, there was one other shorter piece I was looking at that I thought I had here. And here they are. One of the um, This is, uh, uh, I did a series of real short pieces of haikus, and one was based on a scene I saw there in Pottsville. And this is called Home. Pigeons nest on cement ceiling beam, parking garage, home. Home is anywhere that stops the wind. And that's it for tonight. Um, Thanks for listening.
my website is coming along and that should be hoping it's up by July uh, in the meantime I'll keep doing these readings and um, stay safe be good thanks